for joining us on another episode of Pinal's People. We are joining you from the Boyce Thompson Arboretum with our guest for this month, Lynn Namath. Lynn is the Executive Director of the Arboretum here in Superior. Lynn, thank you so much for joining us and agreeing to be on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. So to start off with, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and what got you into ecology? Um, wow. Uh, what a great question. I um, grew up on a farm in southeastern Pennsylvania back in the day when, you know, your parents told you to just uh, go outside and play and figure it out and come back at dinner time. And so my sister and I became naturalists at a very early age and that has stayed with me my whole life. And uh, I love nature. I love learning about nature. Um, we grew up with so many animals on the farm. My mother was an incredible gardener and I think that this is just uh, part of who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course the Arboretum is an incredible attraction and it brings lots of visitors um, to see the incredible gardens here and the abundance of unique plants. Um, and But I know you and I have discussed as well that it plays an important role in co um, conservation as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love if you could share with our viewers, you know, what the role is that the Arboretum fills when it comes to conservation. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Well. At all botanical gardens in Arboreta are serving a conservation function just by our very nature. Um, we collect plants, propagate plants, um, keep them safe, and uh, we have here on site about 30% of our plants are rare or endangered plants. And so we are keeping them alive for people to learn about, but uh, also for wildlife. and. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. I mean, not only uh, do plants benefit people, obviously they create the air that we breathe and the food that we eat, but they're part of the whole system. And that whole system supports wildlife mm -hmm. and uh, pollinators and insects and birds and mammals. And so uh, just by our very existence, we are helping out all those critters. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, water is becoming an increasingly important topic here in Arizona. Um, and how do you foresee the Arboretum being impacted as we're having these discussions about water? Well, right now it's been an interesting year. We've gotten a lot of precipitation, but overall, um, we've been facing long-term drought here in Arizona and throughout the Southwest. And um, we've seen our well levels decline. And uh, the well water is what provides our irrigation. And even though we are in the desert and we have desert plants, they still need water. So if we don't have a good monsoon or we don't have good winter rains, we're still having to uh, irrigate uh, our plants and then when we plant new plants, um, they need to be irrigated for two or three years to establish themselves. So water is really critical. So we're already seeing um, the, the drought here affect our water supply. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is installing a new irrigation system that is computerized. And what we are expecting is that it's going to reduce our water usage by about 30%. Mm -hmm. So ultimately what we want to do is reuse every single drop of water mm -hmm. um, because the predictions are that it's only going to get hotter and drier and we want to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to just the overall mission of the Arboretum and you know the, the wonderful resource that it is for he people here, of course visitors, but even you know residents in Pinal County, what do you wish more people knew? about it? I, I wish that more people recognized the importance of native plants, that um, understood the linkages between the plants and the pollinators and us and everything so that um, we could have more uh, environments that are natural 
and healthy um, here in the Southwest. Um, the other thing that I would like for people to know is that the desert is incredibly biodiverse. Uh, the Sonoran Desert in particular is one of the most biodiverse in the world and that's because we have two rainy seasons most of the time. Um, but the variety and beauty of the plants that we have here is pretty incredible. And not even people that live in Arizona, I, I think, fully understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm actually so glad that you brought up the, the whole thing about the connection. Um, because, you know, development, of course, especially here in Pinal County, is becoming a, a big focal point. Um, and of course, you know, we all want to see the county grow. Um, but what do you wish was, you know, from a ecological standpoint and just, you know, from the standpoint of the executive director of the Arboretum, what do you wish was more part of that conversation when it comes to development and growing sustainably? Well, I think um, making sure that there are natural areas within developments. I, um, I am a big proponent of economic growth. I think we all understand how important it is. We all understand too how important housing is and how and how difficult housing is for a lot of people here in Arizona. But every time I see the bulldozers go in and just rip out everything and then put houses in so close together without preserving natural areas, um, it, it, it bothers me. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I prefer it when it, uh, the washes are saved. Um, that the native vegetation is left there in certain places uh, mm -hmm. because that's going to continue to provide habitat for all of the critters um, that have been living in that area. Yeah. So I, I would like to see more attention paid to the, uh, the landscape in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, for, for people who might know, not know too, um, I'd love if you could speak on this is, you know, how you, you mentioned the critters and how important their habitat is. Um, and for a lot of people, I think it might not be clear what the linkages are, you know, what, how that impacts them. And so if you could sort of explain that to some of our viewers, I would really appreciate it. Sure. Um, I used as an example the other day when I was giving a talk, um, the white-tailed deer population in the East and the Midwest, which has exploded because the natural predators are no longer there. And what has happened is that they are um, eating people's lawns. They carry Lyme disease. The fleas carry Lyme disease. Um, and the population has gotten completely out of control. And then they will starve. I mean, it's just uh, you take one important piece out of a system and the whole system changes, most likely not for the better. And so I think that it would really be wonderful if people understood that, um, well, let's take a saguaro, for example, or an ironwood tree, and the multitude of species that depend on those plants. So they call it the Saguaro Hotel because of how many creatures live in it, live off of it, and how important it is ecologically. So we don't know everything. I mean, we think we know everything, but we really don't. And the importance of having um, native shrubs and trees on your property or leaving certain areas native or natural, um, everything is linked together. Uh, the, uh, the insect populations are going down, the, the birds, bird populations are going down. We need to be caring for them because caring for them is also caring for us. You know, we, uh, our, our futures are linked with one another. Um, I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, 
And so there's one last question I have for you, and this is actually something we've been asking all of our guests this year. We're on a mission to get everybody to answer this question. Um, and so I, of course, would really appreciate it if you could weigh in. But um, years from now, you know, when you've accomplished everything you want to with the Arboretum, you've seen it grow and have it, a, a sustainable future, um, and you're ready to kind of pass on the torch or pass over the keys, um, what, um, what a what would be one lesson or one thing you would like the future generation to know? That it's not us against them. It's not us against nature. We're part of nature. Um, that we are linked together, as I said. That um, that we can live side by side with natural environments and that we are as much a part of the natural environment as a coyote is or a coyote is just as important to the environment as we are however however you want to look at it but i would love to see people really experience and live that. And if, and if we did that, I think that we would be using, for example, um, fewer pesticides and herbicides. And we might eat a more plant-based diet. Uh, we might um, litter less. We might use more native vegetation than grass in our yards. Um, we might have solar panels on our houses. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that, that we can do. Um, I think once, once you recognize that, that connection uh, between us and the natural world. So uh, that's my dream. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lynn. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here.